Alrighty, we return here on TYT Sports. That is JR, I am Rick. So Mike Tomlin has now not even broken the silence. He framed the Le'Veon Bell situation in a way that I've literally never heard words mush together. So he's good at that. He's good at that. Yeah. So here was his own quote with all of this when he was speaking to Diana Brissini of ESPN on the Le'Veon Bell sitch. Have at it. You know, taking nothing away from James, you know, the running of the football is an 11 man job. Uh, we got a great belief in our offensive line. Uh, they're doing a great job opening holes for him. But to James's credit, uh, he's running, catching, blocking, doing all the things that we ask our featured runner to do. Do you think this team still needs Le'Veon Bell back with as good as Connor's playing? You know, we hadn't spent a lot of time focused on it because it's not within our control. Um, those decisions are Le'Veon's. Uh, we need volunteers, not hostages. So we're focused on the guys that are here and working. And, and James is definitely in that mix. We'll cross that bridge when we come to it. Usually when there's something put together like it's one or the other, a lot of times they'll be the opposite. You know, you know, we need I, I get know, what he, heroes, not cowards. You know, <laughs> something like that, right? You need two opposites, right? We need red, not opposite. blue. You know, we need day, not night. <laughs> <laughs> Here was his quote, by the way. <laughs> Those decisions are Le'Veon's. We need volunteers, not hostages. So usually, like, if you had hostages, the other, the other thing would be, like, a kidnapper, right? <laughs> we need burglars, not bank tellers. <laughs> <laughs> so confused. <laughs> like, I get it. Like, we need volunteers. Like, James is volunteering his body in order to get killed in the NFL. Yes. Uh, Le'Veon is holding us hostage. I was thinking if Le'Veon's playing or something, he's held hostage. Like, he's where he doesn't want to be, basically. Mm -hmm. Like, we need a guy who volunteers to play for us, not someone who's forced to, and now he's upset and he's here. That's, that's, the, that's the, which is still, it still comes to the same point. We need someone who wants to be here, not someone who doesn't. Because then if we're forcing to be here, which you can't. I'd like to hear anybody who can reel off some Tomlinisms. <laughs> I like love we, the way he talks about it. He can't, it just, there's no way he, he's ever said that before. We, he we just need, said it right then. <laughs> <laughs> we need more lifeguards, not life rafts. <laughs> <laughs> what are you talking about, bro? I wish I had that Russell Westbrook drop right now. Like, what? <laughs> bro, what is you talking about? Tomlin gives good interviews. Have you seen him cut up uh, uh, Stephen A. that one time? And they were doing it no. lightheartedly. It was fun, though. No, I haven't. I he called him out for being wrong. I saw him. Michael Irvin sweat his ass off, though. That was awesome. Inside a building. Uh, so here's the skinny on the rest of this. By the way, if anybody has a Tomlinism, hit me with it. <laughs> There's a microphone in that control room. Hit me with it. ESPN.com's Jeremy Fowler reported October 2nd that Le'Veon Bell was expected back at some point between the team's bye week. Uh, in week seven, in the game against the Browns in week eight, per Adam Schefter, the Steelers hadn't heard anything as of October 21st. We need volunteers, not hostages. Um, <laughs> Bell has until November 13th to report and get credit for a contract year so he can become a free agent in the offseason. If he chooses not to do that, Steelers will be able to offer Bell the same $14.5 million franchise tag he received this year nice. and try to trade him. So literally, it's going to be deja vu all over again. The Steelers <laughs> also could choose to avoid any further headaches and not tag Bell in 2019, allowing him to leave and getting credit for the departure when calculating uh, compensatory draft picks for 2020. And here's the stats on James Conner. Um, Conner, man. He's been good. As I see this, aren't all head coaches like this? Like, don't they just say some weird shit all the time? Some, like, I guess uh, they seem to be like philosophers in their own right. So they come up with their little sayings yes. and something. Yes. It's because they're used to speaking, most at least, this style of coach. They used to. I've to never seen heart like that before. Yeah. Like, you saw his heart. <laughs> yeah, they're trying to. They're trying to do like they have a lot of inspiring, ins inspirational speeches that they give to guys. Their <laughs> whole lives they've been doing this. Give an inspirational right. speeches to guys who need to perform and they need to find some kind of a, a wordplay to extend their energy to a bunch of guys playing. Because coaches have to just stand there and watch. Right. And they must itch to want to actually contribute, and that's the best they can do. So you come up with anything you can to say. And, you know, we need more tacos, not bells. Lady <laughs> 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 on is what, the wrong kind. One of my favorites is, oh, man, they took the air out of the building. And it's an open stadium. <laughs> That's one of my personal favorites. <laughs> yeah, they really, 
they really took the crowd out of the game. No, they were still there. They didn't leave. Anything. But it means that we all get it, it, though. Just take it literally, and then you'll just have a laugh. All righty, uh, Mike Tomlin needs volunteers, <laughs> not hostages. Take it as you will. Thoughts in the comments section below. Subscribe to Two IT Sport. You know what's my favorite song? You could ring. So do it, why don't you? Ring the damn bell and download the TYT app. Available on Android and iOS.